I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, Adrian um, Kirshner. Is that right, Adrian? Yeah, that's right. From Literati. And she is um, she's with us today talking about, as you can tell from the, uh, from the name of the organization, littering problem on, um, on our planet. And um, without further ado, here's Adrian. Adrian, can you tell us something about you know, where you're, what your background is and how Literati started? Sure. Um, so Literati pretty much started one day when my husband was taking a walk with our kids. We live in the Oakland Hills, and it's, there's lots of trails and everything around here. And my our four year old, our daughter was four years old at the time, and she said she saw a tub of kitty litter just laying abandoned in a stream, and she said, "Daddy, that doesn't go there." And it was a really eye opening moment for Jeff because. You know, we see things like that all the time, and we just sort of let it fade to the background. We don't really think about what it is or that we have any responsibility to do anything about it. And he really kind of had this um, epiphany. And after that moment, he started noticing trash everywhere. And one day, he just started photographing it with Instagram, tagging it with the hashtag Literati, and throwing it out. And and that's pretty much how it all started. Yeah. So um, when he took pictures and he loaded on Instagram, don't you just love social media? Um, <laughs> he loaded onto social media, I mean, onto Instagram. Um, at, at that time, did he think that he was going to be, you know, something like this where he can share uh, with? No. Um, no, and it was kind of surprising uh, when he started telling the story. Uh, because people would see him picking up trash and photographing it and asking him what he's doing, and he would tell them the story, and everyone would be really receptive to it and very excited about it. And a couple of our friends that we told about it, they'd be like, wow, I'm going to start doing that. And then um, I belong to like a local neighborhood group online, and they posted about a litter cleanup in our neighborhood. And I said, Jeff, we should do this. And we went, and he ended up talking to them about Literati, and it just sort of kept growing very organically, where the more people we told the story to, and initially it was just one-on-one, -on -one, like person to person, and then we started using Twitter and Facebook, and it's just sharing that story has gotten people so excited. It, it's almost kind of taken us aback a little bit because there's so much excitement about it, and we never, never imagined a year ago that, that it would get so big. So how many... Um how many pictures have you collected so far of, you know, pictures of, I mean, I'm assuming that people take pictures and they throw them out, right? So yeah. I am equating. It's on the honor system. <laughs> okay. So I'm equating how many pieces of litter that um, got uploaded onto Instagram and people have actually thrown out. How many do you think you have so far? Right now, um, it's over, it's almost getting up to 12,000. I think as of this morning it was um, 11,600. Wow. And, and that's so not that's 11,600 11, pieces less um, on our planet. I mean, they. It's actually more than that because sure. I'll be honest, there's times where I'm snapping photos of trash and I see a couple extra cigarette butts or a gum wrapper and I just don't feel like photographing it all, but I still pick it up. And then we have people that load it onto the Facebook page or tweet about it, but they don't necessarily. Um, it, it, they're not using Instagram, they're using some other um, means of photographing the picture. So there's probably, we're probably closer to 12,000 right now than we realize. So they, do they take pictures of one item? Because I know somebody who lives in California, like along the beach, and she goes to the beach every morning. I mean, seriously, every morning, that's her walk, and she collects trash. She takes pictures of what she collected that morning every day and puts it on her Facebook. So it's not one item, but like a whole trash can right. full right. of trash. Yeah, and, and so, so really, if you, if you look at it that way, we're probably over 12,000 because we do have photographs like that where you look at the digital landfill and you'll see someone just took a picture of a pile of trash that they collected. Um, or they'll do before and after images of um, a creek bed or something like that where there's a lot of trash laying there in the before picture and after it's gone. But clearly that's more than just one piece. So, yeah, the number's probably kind of understated right now. Wow. I know somebody who um, actually started a campaign to ban cigarettes on, on, I think it's called Wright's Beach in North Carolina. 
and I believe um, her site is called It Starts With Me, and she actually yeah. picked up cigarette butts, and she, she, you know, petitioned the town to ban cigarettes from from right speech, and she succeeded. That's so fantastic. this, yeah. So this, your your movement just sounds very similar to what she, you know, what she achieved. So well, and that actually brings up an interesting point in that because uh, I've seen that hashtag, it starts with me, and there's other hashtags out there that are focused around uh, movements like this. And a lot of people will tag when they pick up a piece of litter, they'll tag it with multiple hashtags. And what we're finding is that literati is kind of unifying all of these different movements. So that That's all right. of these people who are working independently in these different places, it's sort of like you bringing them all together and making them aware that there's other people out there that are passionate about the same thing. Wow. Um, so imagine what this can uh, develop into. I mean, you started out, you know, what, a year ago? Jeff started this year ago, you said? Last summer, pretty much, was when he picked up the first piece of litter and tagged it with Litterati. Wow. Okay. And so far, it's it's... It's been about 11,000 uh, pieces that's just been uh, cataloged, and I'm sure there are a whole bunch more. But if, if it starts with this and you're, um, you know, you're, you're uh, sort of incorporating other movements out there that's related to trash and recycling, this could be really a huge, you know, huge uh, change for a lot of your uh, users and, and yeah. what you can do. So um, tell me about some of the items that you've seen on either on your site or Instagram, some of the most memorable ones. Um, let's start with something that like the most disgusting thing you've, you can't imagine that um, people will either throw out or, or be honest, like maybe it fell out of garbage can or, you know, garbage yeah, trucks I, or whatever. Sadly, the, some of the stuff I found, I think it's just really left there. I found um, used condoms. Oh. Which is just, um, yeah, you want to use a glove or one of the little gripper yeah, yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah. I hope uh, you're using either, yeah, something to pick up this, this litter and not with your bare hands. Because you know, I'm assuming you have some dangerous ones too, right? Oh, yeah. Um, in, in San Francisco, Jeff has um, come across some, you know, you find glass. Uh, someone beer actually. Bottles, I'm sure. Beer bottles, yeah. Um, someone even uh, picked up a grenade. Oh my goodness! Really? Yeah, there was. Well, it was. I think, if I remember correctly, the photograph was taken at West Point. So it was like a crew of um, people from West Point that were doing litter cleanup, and they found an old grenade. And we assumed that because they are West Point, they probably are a little bit more savvy in knowing whether or not something like that is safe to pick up. I probably would not take the chance on my own. Yeah. Something like that. Up. I would probably call for help. Yeah. Really. I love. Um, and and what else? What what's like the most memorable item that that you think that's on your site or in your digital landfill? I, I love that term. <laughs> the digital landfill, yeah. Um, there's lots of really memorable ones. Um, just because some of them are just really funny. Uh, there's some sad ones like uh, we found some hypodermic needles. Um, so that can't be safe. But no, and actually some organizations, like some local litter cleanups will, t will tell you if you see something like that not to pick it up. Um, they'll actually, um, I'm, I'm not sure what they do then to, to, we still pick them up. I mean, we figure there's a safe way to pick them up, especially if you have a glove or a, a gripper. So. Because those hyperder hyperdermic needles are supposed to be disposed properly with hazardous right. materials. Right. So we don't boxes. just we don't we wouldn't just dump them in the trash. You end up we end up putting them in a separate bag, and um, you can take them to local hospitals. Usually have like a, a place where you can you can drop them off and stuff like that. So you must have a huge amount of data with um, you know with what people picked up, what people showed. I just want to show. Um, a screen of your um, your site with the map. Okay. Um, just this is just United States, right? And Canada. And Canada. Um, and I think I can, ex you know, look look closely or um, like to sit, uh, you know, to to look at each cities, but also look at the world, right? Right. Yeah. And this is on your website, and you can see where the most trash is found, or actually this is where people have um, sent in yeah. the, the pictures, so that's how you flag them? 
Yeah, so the important thing to keep in mind when you're looking at these numbers is it's not necessarily reflective of where a lot of trash is. Like right now, if you look at those numbers, you're going to see, oh my goodness, there's so much more trash in the United States than there is anywhere else. Right. And that's not true. It's just that our movement has gained more momentum so far in the U.S. Okay. And, um, but you can, I mean, some of the, these, some of these, uh, places are, it's pretty remarkable where, where litter has been picked up. I think if you go over to China, uh, one of the early pieces was uh, picked up on the Great Wall of China. Oh, and, Great Wall of China. Yeah. It's um, probably tourists, <laughs> I would think. Yeah, probably. Um, I, and, there, and there are a couple in Japan and, and, and Korea, too. Poo. Yeah. And Taiwan. So these are all unique, like, individual users who have heard about the Literati movement and started on their own picking up litter and tagging it with the hashtag Literati. And um, look at that, California, over 7,000. Yeah, but people. what's really crazy, it went, well, that's not 7,000 people. So the, the pieces. The, right. Um, but if you Pieces. zoom in on that, um, you start to see where, where there's a lot of litter. Like if you zoom in on Oakland, you'll see that we find a lot of litter around Lake Merritt. And now, what does this data tell you, though? It I mean, tells you a lot. It tells you a lot about human behavior. It can, I think we think that um, cities and um, municipalities could use the data to try to figure out where they need to more strategically place litter bins or recycling bins. Oh, um, that's interesting. We think that it could also point out, like if you if you start breaking the data down by uh, timestamp, uh, you'll notice that the streets are literally trashier on um, garbage pickup days. And oh. that could actually indicate maybe that there's a problem with the process, you know, with either the, the garbage truck or the, 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 the trash containers, that something about that process, when you lift those bins up and attach them to the garbage truck to dump them in, um, litter's falling out. So maybe there's, a, there's something that needs to change there about how the, litter, or how the trash is collected so that stuff doesn't end up on the street. Um, so, yeah. so there are time, time stamps. So you have uh, collected all this data. Now, are you planning to approach the municipalities about what they can do about those trash picking up days and the routes and garbage? Yeah, uh, yeah. We um, we we could probably do that right now with Oakland because we picked up so much litter in Oakland. But uh, we hope to get as the movement grows to a point of critical mass where the data will become much more useful to, to local governments and even to companies to understand where, where their packaging is ending up and, and maybe what they could change to, to prevent that from happening. So um, you mentioned companies. What, um, from your data, what company, um, I mean, I don't want to say, you know, they're not the cause of, of this problem, but right. what company packaging um, do you find the most, or products that you find the most? Um, well, I, I think what you said is a really good point. So what we like to really stress is that when we do see certain brands out there a lot, we're not saying that those companies are responsible for littering, but um, their products are ending up you know, in our streams, in our, our sidewalks, in our waterways. And we want to emphasize to them that we, I think that the thing to approach companies with is how can we work together to change this? Maybe it's about reducing packaging or making compostable packaging or plant-based packaging or reusable containers so that the stuff isn't ending up on the ground or in the water. Um, but I think it's important to stress, you know, like Starbucks, for example. Starbucks, we see a lot of containers on the ground, coffee cups. Now, Starbucks tends to be a pretty socially responsible company, and they're not—they're not encouraging people to live. They're not—they're not the ones leaving the, the, their coffee cups on the ground. But maybe there's an opportunity to partner with Starbucks, for example, and and educate their consumer about about you know response, being more responsible. Maybe um, maybe we could set up programs where if you go into a Starbucks and you show them that you've picked up 10 pieces of litter, you get a free reusable coffee cup. That's and a great idea. So stuff like that, those are, the, those are the opportunities that we see where we could partner with companies to, to change human, people's behavior. 
It would be really interesting to find out what um, you know what what those companies say to you like once you start approaching them. Like I'm I'm assuming that uh, big companies like Coke or Pepsi, um, you know, their products are in these uh, containers that some of them can be recycled, some of them cannot be recycled, but it is just everywhere, just like cigarettes, right? That yeah. Um, I'm sure people will love to find out if there are ways to to discard them safely so that it's, you know, they're not littering. I mean, I don't think these people mean, you know, they, they mean to, like, destroy the, the planet, but it's just making it easy for them to discard the trash. So if the company, yeah. I wonder if how the companies will react. You know, and I, I'm curious about that myself. We've ha we have seen sometimes where we, we take a photograph of something and we tag it with the hashtag literati and then we tag it with the name of the product or the, the company that makes the product. And every now and then we'll see someone on Instagram who likes the photo and it's someone from, say, Starbucks or Weight Watchers or whoever the company is that, that is responsible for manufacturing the product. And um, we're still trying to figure out how how we open that dialogue because there's an opportunity there to say no 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 this isn't this isn't something you should like I mean this isn't a good thing for your brain <laughs> this this is actually bad and and we need to figure out how to stop this from happening. Um, um. At one point, I think I saw Starbucks as as the top uh, litter. I, I can't remember how many months ago it was. Now it's cigarettes, and I see the brands of cigarettes on your website. Right. Um, which ones yeah. are like the most discarded? Um, and I see plastic as a category, and I also see a recycle as a category. That kind of confused me a little bit. Recycle. Yeah. Um, I guess some, some things are recyclable, but they're, you know, they're being thrown out or something like that. Um, so that was interesting. But you have a really interesting data of what type of items are being thrown out and what countries they're from. Right. So that it's it's kind of like social, um, you know, it's, it's like a social phenomenon, right? Because yeah. when you see litter in pristine countries like Japan, you start to wonder, hey, you know, it's it's not just our problem, but it really is our planet's problem. Right, and it really truly is everywhere. That um, I, and distinguishing between perception and reality, there's this perception that certain places are really clean and certain places aren't. Um, I think people tend to think of Canada as very, you know, pristine wilderness. So the fact that we're seeing litter being picked up in some remote places in Canada is a little bit um, jarring to realize that the reality is quite different from the, the perception and that this is really truly a global problem. It's not just that Americans tend to litter or, you know, that, that certain countries are dirtier than others. It's, it's really everywhere. So is... Um Literati, a, a non-profit organization, because yeah, it's literati.org. Can you explain a little bit what, yeah, what entity? So we're still trying to figure that out. Um, the, the, the truth of the matter is, is that when, when we started the website, .com was already taken. So we figured um, org was the next best option, um, okay. especially since we're not funded yet, and it's not like we could go out and try to acquire um, the .com from whoever currently owns it. Um, but we don't really know what we are yet. Right now, we're truly a movement. Um, we're not a for-profit. We're not a non-profit. We're, we're neither. And we're still trying to figure out what this is going to be. So where do you see yourself in five years? I mean, I know this is a movement. It sounds like a, a grassroots movement that can touch a lot of different sectors. But I really love the fact that you can approach with the data that is, right. you can't fake the data, you know, you, and it, it's not like you did the research, you have people sending in, you know, what they saw. Right, um, it's real-time data that's constantly being updated. Um, so this is really a powerful tool to, um, you know, to show the companies and show the government like, hey, we need to do X, Y, Z. So in five years, like if you can, you know, let's say money is no object, where, where would you like to see literati go? It, it looks, where I would like to see it go, one, I would love to see us get that critical mass and really have the, the largest global database of, of litter. And I would love to implement programs to use that data to um, work with cities, governments, and uh, get better trash receptacles out there for landfill, recycling, and compost. 
um, to have things more strategically placed so people have the opportunity to actually put it in the proper place and not just leave it on the ground. Um, to have established programs and relationships with corporations so that we can work proactively to uh, reduce it from the source. Um, you know, change packaging, change, uh, make things more reusable or make things more compostable so that it's not even ending up, um, you're not ending up with plastic floating out into the ocean. I think um, another thing we would like to have, and we've started to do this a little bit already, is educational outreach. Uh, we already worked with a, a local school here in Oakland, Bret Hart Middle School, and I would love to start doing more of that where globally we could have just like packets that we could send out, starter kits that we could send out to people um, where people could implement their own neighborhood programs or um, programs at their schools to get kids to start picking up litter. Because I do think the younger you get people to start being aware of this problem and, and establishing the habit of picking up litter when they see it, uh, the more likely we are to see a lasting change years, in years to come. You know, it's interesting you say that about kits because I think kits um, are a lot more, you know, a lot more observant. Like you were saying about your daughter noticing that cat litter doesn't, you know, belong in, you know, in, in the creek. I mean, I think right. the kits, yeah, kits are definitely a better teacher in that regard because they know what's right and wrong. I mean, we tend well, to. Well, and they're more, they're more adaptable, and I think it's easier to start habits. It's just like with any kind of behavior change. You know, when you're trying to adopt a healthier lifestyle, you, you start with small changes, like um, switching from whole milk to low-fat milk. That's a simple, small change that's a lot easier to adopt and make a habit and be a lasting change. The same thing here. If you start with just picking up one piece of litter, but you do it enough times, it's going to become habit-forming. And the younger you are when you make that behavior change, the more likely it is to be it's ingrained in you mentally to start doing it. So do you um, So do you have to just upload to Instagram only? How do people actually send their photos to you? Or so upload their photos to your site? Or like how do you catalog these photos if people don't have Instagram, you know, Instagram accounts or if they don't have a smartphone? How, how do they right. do that? Okay, so um, right now, yes. Uh, having a smartphone and using Instagram is the primary way that things feed into the digital landfill. But there are other ways to do it if you don't have Instagram. You can just take photos with a traditional camera and email them to us or post them on Facebook, on our Facebook page or um, tweet them to us and we can personally upload them to the digital landfill. Down the road, we would like to develop an app and also just create um, on the, the Literati website a way for people to just upload their photographs directly. Oh, them. cool. Yeah. We, we love apps, don't we? <laughs> There's an app for that. There's an app for right, garbage, exactly. too. <laughs> There's an app um, for that. So just so that um, our readers or our listeners know, if they have, um, you know, if they don't have a smartphone and they have a picture of something that they want to email to you, where do they send it? Is it? What's your email address that they can um, use? It's right on the Literati website. They could email it to jeff at literati.org or adrian at literati.org. Um, the easiest way probably is just to, if you're on Facebook, to like us on, like our Literati Facebook page and just post them there or message them. You could email photos to us through the, the Facebook Messenger or Facebook um, email. Oh, okay. So it's facebook.com backslash L-I-T-T-E-R-A-T-I, -T -T -E correct? Yeah. That's your page. So they can mm -hmm. like your page and they can um, share the photo on your page or must send you a message on Facebook. Yeah, and we're also on Google Plus. So if you've um, connected with us on Google Plus, you can also send us okay. that way. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for joining me and chatting with me about, um, about your great, you know, grassroots movement. I hope it goes beyond just, you know, uploading pictures for fun, that you're actually mm -hmm. making changes and, um, and you know, working with, with the government and, and the companies. I really look forward to seeing you grow. And, Thank uh, you very much. Oh, keep us updated. Keep, just keep us posted. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing your hashtag 
on Instagram and, and everywhere. Now I think you can hashtag Facebook also, so you can see. You That's can right, see. you can. You can. Right. And, and also Google Plus as well, and on Twitter, everywhere. So. It's everywhere. Yeah, anyway. Well, thank you so much, and say hello to Jeff for us. I will. Thank you and very much. And we'll see you soon. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye.